जीतान वायर इज जिग्नेश uh jignesh should be here in about a minute he's just closing out a call uh just okay. i think we just going to be in a minute more okay okay good very good very good yeah. okay sounds good the city of forum president my my elder friend is coming uh, uh honorable president sir already joined uh, okay tapunda hi everybody welcome tapunda allow me to introduce mr jitanesh chandani Okay. Okay. Hello. Uh, for your kind information, sir, we all are in Facebook Live now. Okay. Uh, in our Facebook page, facebook dot com slash Bangladesh City of Rao. जीतेंद्र Mr. Uh, Kumar Ghosh, additional secretary. Our second vice president is here, Mr. Uh, I'm also seeing all my Mr. Abdul Al Mamun is here, and all my city forum members. Many of them have already joined. It's around 47 participants here. Here we are still as uh, seven minutes ahead of time, but I think this is, we can utilize this time by introducing each other. Uh, I think you can. Uh, So it's a free time for six minutes. You can tell whatever you you feel better. Sure. And maybe, uh, would you like me to start with my introduction? Would that be okay? Yeah. Jitan, please yes. do please do kindly give us a detailed introduction. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> uh, thank you. So uh, I think right on top. Uh, really kind of thank you to bangladesh city of forum for actually giving us this opportunity uh believe it or not i have actually have been coming to dhaka for the better part of the last 3 and a half years for actually being a part of a conversation like this uh, uh, which is of course the whole meeting us what i do at ibm is i manage ibm's blockchain business for india and south asia and of course bangladesh is a very big part of that and the main goal for us has always been not just trying to kind of push the the blockchain the technology but more so in explaining people what is the business problem that we are trying to solve uh of course uh, the we have had some level of success we yeah. are yeah. currently yeah. doing an active project in bangladesh with ipdc but of course with the support of all of you we would like to kind of further our reach and i think in some cases also expand the different use cases where we would think bangladesh can actually benefit from so that's the main purpose for us in terms of participating and i really thank you all of you for kind of inviting us for this forum my other colleague jignesh karya should be here very soon in fact uh, he's also been working with me for the better part of the last 3 and a half years and we've managed to successfully launch about three different large scale networks in uh, india and we're looking forward to kind of working with you a uh, special mention of course and thank you also to mustafa satar uh, and onto as of course all of you know him has been extremely helpful in helping us to get our message through as well as connecting us to different clients and of course he's a very dear partner to ibm and also a little what whatever other needs you probably require so i'm actually looking forward to quite an exciting session and please feel free any point of time to stop me and ask for questions because for me the purpose of the session is let's make it interactive ask me what doubts you actually have because i'm pretty sure technology wise we'll take care of it but i think it's the business application for blockchain what seems to be the most confusing so if you need to stop me and ask for a question please feel free to do that and i'm looking forward to the session so thank you अनेक 
অনেক হ্যালো यस স্যার আমার ভিডিও আমার ভিডিও আবার আবার ব্লক হয়ে গেছে দেখো সরি Mr. Mohammed Ali, are you here? Can you hear me? Mr. Mohammed Ali, if you are not there, let me let me continue. Actually, uh, this is the first time we are doing event with uh, CTO Forum for FinTech, uh, like blockchain and other things. So, IBM is a very popular brand here. All of us in the banking industry or others, all of us uses IBM. So IBM is nothing new here, but IBM software wing is uh, uh, they are also here for a long time. But yeah. this is the first time we are seeing someone from uh, blockchain who has actually uh, put us in difficult in difficult situation like pandemic. So I think you have uh, CQ forum, I, Mr. Chandani. Do you have any idea about CQ forum? Uh, sir, I have very high level overview, so I think uh, I'll actually appreciate if you can tell me more about it, though. Yeah, yeah CTO Forum is a non-political, non-profitable organization. This is the organization of all the CTOs of Bangladesh. Earlier, it was Banker CTO Forum. But uh -huh. Later, we have expanded it. We have included all the members. It's already banking, telco, and all the government and all. And if you go to our participant list and other you will find this is a combination of government public and all combination of technology people of Bangladesh. So actually we do a lot of events on different uh, latest technology uh, like blockchain and others other technology as well. This is our 10th session. Oh, wow. Before that we have conducted live session. So uh, since uh, we have Two minutes left, so actually uh, we will start right at six. Our Facebook live has already started. Since I can see 61 participants on the on the Zoom, and in Facebook is more than 3,000. Uh, should we start right now, or we will take a, we will wait for two minutes to for the scheduled time? Let us let us wait for two minutes, Sapunda. Okay, okay. Let's wait for two minutes. In the meantime. Uh, let me continue with our CQ forum journey. Yes, please. CQ forum is a... Sorry, so, My video is... We have actually stopped all the videos except the speakers right now. Now I can see our second voice. Uh, hello. So what we have done actually, we have mute all the videos and the speaker other than the participant, other than the speakers right now in the opening. When it will be an open session for all, then we will open everything for for everyone. So unless and until all the video and microphone will be muted during the during this session. So if you have any question. You can put it on the chat box so that we can call you from the participant. If anyone have anything to say, you just note it down on our chat box so that we can call you call you later and we can identify you exactly what is the question you have and for whom. So this is already six. This is already six p.m. I think this is the good time to start. Okay. So yes, I'm starting on behalf of City of Forum. I'm Tapan Kanti Sharkar, President of the Forum. Welcome you all. Adat, Namaskar, and good evening. All of you know that August Mask is our national morning month. We pay our deep respect to the father of the nation of our country, who was killed on 16th August. And so we pray our deep respect for him and all the family members who are killed on 15th August. At first, I want to share my heartiest strength to today's keynote speaker, Mr. Jitenesh Chandani, IBM blockchain leader, 
Then I would like to introduce my my speaker from so from the top, our past vice president and chairman of regulatory and international affairs forum, forum Mr. Mohishundal Alam, director general of DOT, Government of People's Republic of Bangladesh. Then I would like to introduce our second vice president, Mr. Bikondo Kumar Ghosh, and he is also the additional secretary of ICT ministry, People's Republic of Bangladesh, and chairman for government affairs and health and safety committee of CPO from Bangladesh. I, I think our third vice president, Mr. Jakir, who will join with us. I don't know whether he is still here. He will join with us within, within short time. He is the executive director of Bangladesh Bank and Research and Development Subcommittee of CTO Forum. We have with us our general secretary, Mr. Muhammad Ali, additional director of Body Bank Limited. We have here with our joint secretary, Mr. Tahir Ahmed Choudhury, deputy, deputy, deputy managing director of Islamic Bank and chairman of Cyber Security and Membership Committee. We also have our honorable executive member, Mr. Muhammad Abdul Al Mamun, Deputy Managing Director of United Commercial Bank and Chairman of Leadership and Development Committee. We have also here with us our Chairman for Online Event and Seminar Committee, Mr. Muhammad Asi. He is, he is our cloud, he is the cloud specialist of Rogi Exeater. And we are expecting Mr. Ginesh Karia, Executive Architect and Master Inventor of IBM, who will join with us. Probably he has joined. If not, he will join with us very soon. So, hoping this, um, I'm welcoming you all again to this forum to hear from our respected, respected keynote speaker. But before that, I would like to tell you something about our CPU forum. All of you are aware that CPU forum Bangladesh is a non political and non profitable organization. Since the beginning of the COVID 19 pandemic situation, when all the activities was stopped, CTU Forum Bangladesh want, wants to focus on challenges and opportunities on the IT industry and also the challenge of IT professionals. And because of that, CTU Forum continuing arranging many online activities. Today is our 10th online event. Today's topic is blockchain for business. We already heard that because of the fourth industrial revolution, Blockchain is one of the major components of fourth industrial revolution era. Implementing blockchain in business unblocks tremendous value in virtually every industry like startup, construction across the fintech, financial service, supply chain, state finance, insurance, collateral management, banking, and syndicate lending. The blockchain technology has been getting a lot of attention lately for its industry disruption capabilities. As a result, many industries are falling over themselves to trying to incorporate blockchain. However, should all the companies use the blockchain? What are the things that one must consider before incorporating the blockchain in his business? And what are the challenges they may face? And what are the future benefit they will get from this block, adopting blockchain blockchain technology we will hear from our keynote speaker mr chandani so however i i will not continue my speech very long i will go to mr js chandani to you for his valuable keynote speech mr jitain is chandani over to you Uh, dear uh, Chandani sir, please unmute Sorry. yourself. Sorry about that. So right on top, um, Mr. Sarkar, thank you again for uh, this opportunity and also the explanation in terms of the CTO forum and the expectations. We from IBM are very appreciative of this opportunity. And again, uh, as I think we've said earlier, I've been kind of coming to Bangladesh for the better part of the last three and a half years. And I'm actually 
quite excited for the audience that I've actually got, considering we've been there for so long. So really kind of glad to be here. And I'm kind of speak for Jignesh when I say that. I would like to kind of share my screen and uh, I would request access for sharing my screen. Would that be possible? Yeah, sure, sir. Please. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Can all of you see my screen? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so I think, again, from a quick introduction standpoint, uh, my name is Shatan Chandani. I manage the IBM blockchain practice for India South Asia. Uh, primary, my main objective for my role and for what I do is to help clients adopt blockchain. Mr. Tapan Sarkar was absolutely right. A lot of companies are actually jumping onto blockchain. And uh, I think if you actually ask IBM, we would tell everybody that we've done 1,100 different use cases for blockchain. I can also promise you not more than 20% will actually see production. So the idea of how do you evaluate a particular technology, how you have to look at the problem statement, what are the considerations and where the markets are actually moving are just some of the topics that I would like to cover. And that's what I do as a part of my role. I also would like to have a special mention to Mustaba Tatar. Who is a who's part of IBM partner as part of Pioneer Upline Limited, and Ananto, sorry Ananto, I'll call you Ananto. That's more easier. Ananto has been helping us to kind of connect with different people across the Bangladesh economy, being banks, being telcos, and we really look forward to kind of working together with them in the future. So, for any questions, such thoughts that you guys have about IBM, I think Ananto is a great contact actually, and I have, of course has his contact on the last page. Uh, I've set up the agenda very simple. Let's level set, first of all, what you call blockchain and what I call blockchain. For me, that becomes the fundamental part, right? Because a lot has been said about the technology. A lot has been thought about the technology. But I personally think it's a very simple technology, to be honest, right? So let's level set as to why is it become such a big deal at this point of time. What is an enterprise required to do? So I think we've actually had the uh, luck of actually working with Ananto and kind of talking to some of the leading clients, especially in the telco space, right? the likes of Grameen Phone, the likes of Robbie Axiata, the likes of Bangla Link and all, as well as to some of the banks that we're working with and talking to them. But what is the difference between an enterprise blockchain solution and what's the difference between actually doing a, a Bitcoin transaction? Uh, the big topic, central bank digital currencies. How do we see things going up? What's coming up? And of course, case studies and additional pieces. So a very packed agenda. So again, I'll try to go as early as possible. But main thing, let's level set as to what I call blockchain and what you call blockchain. This is a simple definition of blockchain as we could get from a lot of other sites, right? A form of a distributed ledger technology that serves a decentralized database wherein records are captured in blocks, cryptographically secured, each block, blah, 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 blah. Keywords that you need to take from here, ledger. Another keyword, database and a chain of transactions. However, to kind of put these concepts together, let's take a step back and kind of talk about a few words or key concepts altogether, right? And some of those terms that you keep hearing on blockchain to kind of really broaden the understanding is like words like assets, words like ledger, words like transaction, contract. Let's kind of try to bring them all together so that we can be in the same page how blockchains really do actually work and what exactly is the purpose of it. My very first definition is when you're thinking of blockchain, you gotta think of the word asset. And what exactly is an asset, right? I give you a bottle of Coca-Cola, you give me a bottle of water. The bottle of Coca-Cola is the asset. I give you cash, you give me a government bond. That's an asset too, but that's an intangible asset. At the same point of time, we exchange the bottle of Coca-Cola for cash. Well, both of them are actually assets being trans transferred, right? That means assets are basically objects which basically change ownership by, a, by two parties involved, right? That's generally what the purpose of the asset is. And the assets actually have a value, an absolute value that can be transferred from one party to the other. That's the fundamental of asset and that's what business is based on. Now, typically, if I am giving you a bottle of water for a bottle of Coca-Cola, what do I do with that transaction? I wanna keep a record because what I've done is I've given a hundred bottle of Coca-Colas to Ananto, a hundred to my friend Jignesh and a hundred to somebody else. Where do I keep these records? 
Jignesh decided that he wanted to keep all these records in an Excel document. Ananto decided that he wanted to keep all these records in a very fancy Oracle system. I wanted to keep a hard copy document where I wrote all my diaries. What's the most simplest word for all these three systems? Nothing, just ledger. So assets are basically transacted by participants and recorded on ledgers. And a transaction is basically just, in some cases, a record of what happened to that asset when it moved from one party to the other. So ledgers are systems of the records, which basically hold the transactional change of ownership value of the asset. Well, the assets are transferred based on certain protocols or based on certain rules, right? Today, if I need to transfer money from a foreign country into Bangladesh or out of Bangladesh, I have to follow a certain protocol. There has to be fees that need to, to be thought through. There's been spot trades, Fairfax trades that need to be considered. These protocols are what basically we put into a world into smart contracts. My most simplest definition of a smart contract is if I gave you 100 bottles of Coca Cola, 100 taka. But what if I gave you 200 bottles of Coca Cola, you give me a discount, then you give me only 180 taka. If I give you 500, the discount goes. These are business rules that have to be fed in. However, before the transaction takes place, the central bank has to approve that the money is going to leave the country. So we get a regulator. That's a protocol. So technically, today's world, we do asset transactions where people exchange assets. They record those assets on system of records or ledgers. And those transactions follow a specific protocol. This protocol could be governance protocol, a regulatory protocol, just the control altogether. Now, the only way all this is possible is if the ecosystem works together. Because if you take the same bottle of Coca-Cola, where did it come from? It came from a retail shop that you bought it. The retail store got it from a truck guy, logistics, who dropped it over there, which came from a warehouse, which came from the manufacturer. The manager got the wrong material somebody else. All these parties are all involved in this one transaction. And you call these parties collectively an ecosystem. Fundamentally, a typical transaction is an exchange of assets that's done by an ecosystem and it's recorded on a ledger. And as a result, because all the ecosystem participants have multiple ledgers, you have disputes, you have delays, you have issues. So can I bring all the ledgers together? And that's, I think, where the idea of blockchains came into play. Blockchain was simply addressing a problem which you and I deal with every single day in business be it financial services, be it telecom, be it tangible products, intangible products altogether. Be it the fact that, you know what, today I, I actually sell fruits because I'm a wholesaler at Walmart. I call up my supplier, he changes the price. The price has gone from $1 to $1.25. We agreed on the phone. Who, who kept the record? I Next day I left the job. How do you keep track of these records? How do you keep track of these life cycle changes that happen in a transaction? That's, I think, what creates a problem statement. And let's remember the most important thing. If today I have a dispute or an invoice or on any transaction and my money gets stuck, if it takes 30 or 45 days for the money to be recovered, that is not a recovery. I have lost the opportunity cost of money. So there is no ROI or a dispute resolution. So technically every time there's money stuck where you have to receive money for 30 or 60 days, you're losing opportunity cost left, right, and center. And that is the loss. When compliance asks us, oh, you know what, tell me what my optimization is for a dispute resolution. Well, tell me how much money is stuck for you for above 30 days. Let's put the basic prime interest rate on it. And that's the answer to your question. If the money is not not, then you've got a good system. If the answer is that, then that's how you calculate ROI. And these are the questions we get from business quite regularly. Uh, how does enterprise blockchain very different from it, right? So then I think in terms of peer culture on how blockchain actually works, now let's talk how enterprise blockchain is different. Now, the overall problem statement, which again, what we actually had was I was taking an example and I was going to use a more layman's example, right? Today, I have a scenario where I'm going to use the supply chain finance scenario that we've actually implemented with IPDC finance back in Bangladesh, right? The problem was very simple. I actually am a supplier and I'm going to use an auto example. I got an order. I'm a supplier of tires. I actually make tires. I got an order from a car manufacturer who said, you know what, give me a hundred tires. Now I took the purchase order. I went back home and after 15 days, I called up a manufacturer and said, you know what, the price of rubber has basically changed. 
the tires won't cost one Tata, they will cost 150. What the manufacturer agreed to me, and we kept the phone down. After like, third, so I called up and as the manufacturer, I called up my rubber farmers, my rubber distributors, got the tires ready. On the end of the month, I called up the logistics guy and said, come pick up the tires. However, I only gave them 90 tires. And I ran to the bank with my invoice. That you know what, this auto company has basically given me a, a purchase order. I have sent the tires, but I sent only 90 tires. And the price which I had was the new price, 150, right? Not one which he agreed on the purchase order. When the manufacturer got the orders, they opened the tire, they realized there were only 90 tires. Out of 90 tires, 10 were damaged. So 80 tires in total. What should have been on the invoice? There is so much different changes that have actually happened. My prices got changed, tires were actually damaged, as well as tires were not completely full quality. How does the bank know what to pay? Well, the bank says, fine, bring me your invoice. I will sit for 20 days and call the manufacturer, how many tires came in, what was the damage, what was the price? I, as a supplier, get paid after 20 days of sending my goods. 20 days, that's my money that's actually stuck. Why? Because what you see in the screen are the different participants with different systems, with different data available across the board and nobody knows what the full transaction it means. Every time I am checking the transaction, I have to call up everybody in the chain. Tell me what's the price of the tire. Tell me what's the purchase order. Tell me how many tires came in. And that's why delays actually happen. What if we had put everything on a blockchain? What if when the purchase order got issued, the bank got a notification? Company A, auto manufacturer, has sent a purchase order. The bank is notified that after 30 days, you better keep money of 100 taka for this particular bill. The supplier gets that order. Supplier confirms only then the order is valid. A price change happens. The price change gets recorded, the bank gets notified, supply gets notified, manufacturer gets notified. When the warehouse, the logistics guy comes to pick up the tires, he says not 100 tires, only 90 tires got picked up. When the goods are basically scanned and for quality, only 80 tires is basically supposed to be good. When all these life cycle events are communicated to all the participants, I don't need reconciliations. I don't need calls to be made. I have one system. I can make the payment to the supplier in about three days. From 17, I have reduced the payment cycle to three days. That's an 85% reduction. Now let's put the opportunity cost for this. I, as supplier, just increased my production cycle from 20 days to three days. I increased about seven times. If you're a bank who gets, who makes net interest margin on the invoice for factoring or discounting, and if you're a 90 day credit, initially you're making interest only 70 days. Now you're going to make for 87, oh, sorry, 87 days. Your net interest margin goes up. And that's what happens when you have one consistent ledger and that's how blockchains come into being. However, these are enterprise blockchains. These require ecosystem participants to trust themselves. They require institutions like yourselves who are big banks right now, who are big telecom players, who can validate participants. You can say, you know what? Yes, you are a company who's part of this blockchain. Not anybody and everybody can participate in the blockchain, which is the reality in some cases for what Bitcoin is, right? For all that, for me doing a Bitcoin transaction requires me to take one laptop. I get a laptop, I need 250 MB, GB of space, and I can start doing Bitcoin transactions. That, those are what you call unpermissioned public ledgers. Every Bitcoin transaction takes the last, at least I remember, about seven to eight minutes. Why? Because three million participants need to get a copy of the transaction. But let's take an example of the supply chain finance transaction I spoke about. There are a total of seven participants. Supplier, manufacturer, bank, warehouse, probably regulator, probably uh, two more participants could be like supplier one, supplier two. If 3 million participants take about seven minutes for a transaction, for seven participants, it is a nanosecond. Plus, no participant can get a laptop and participate because these are permissioned blockchains. Only members who are party to a particular business can participate in these blockchains. Most important point. The second most important point, I am supplier one, you there is supplier two. Both of us produce tires. If the auto manufacturer gives a purchase order to supplier one and I give him a price and supplier two gives a price, supplier three gives a price, the suppliers can't see each other's price. Privacy is maintained. So no, blockchains do not share everything with all the participants. It is a controlled sharing that's very important. 
privacy is maintained, security is actually maintained, and of course, to talk, everything is encrypted. That's the nature of blockchain, which makes these ownership requirements, which makes the overall idea of blockchain being more secure, being more comfortable across the ecosystem. I'm going to repeat one last point. I give an example of Jignesh and Ananto in this example, right? Jignesh has Excel, Ananto has an Oracle system, I use a ledger. Very much possible in an ecosystem, you have varied levels of infrastructure maturity. Blockchains can integrate with whatever application you want. We can we've done integrations with SAPs, Oracle, your homegrown systems altogether. We're actually working with telecom players who also use SMS services and those SMS get logged on blockchain. So because the use of APIs and the way the data structures actually created, blockchains are highly versatile and are independent of the infrastructure capability of the participant. A very important point, because today if I get a fancy SAP system and you can't consume an API, what are you gonna do with it? It's back to Excel, back to phone calls, which defeat the entire purpose. Can I get data from a smartphone or an SMS to blockchain? The answer is yes. And this is not theory. We are doing this in India at this point of time with the telecom blockchain, with Airtel, with Vodafone, and with Reliance Geo today as active blockchains. However, let's be very honest, blockchain requires that there should be a need for trust, that you need to kind of build this ecosystem. For example, if I have a big company and I want to do reconciliation between one department to the other department, my question is, why do you need blockchain? If the departments have to kind of work together, is it because your ERP is not being set up correctly? Is the data sharing possible not to do something like that? What is the need for the trust to be created? So the business case becomes extremely important. Why do you need a shared ledger? Let's answer that question. What are the business logic that needs to be implemented? If this will be all manual, then maybe blockchain is not the answer. Does privacy need to be maintained between two departments in a particular organization? And what consensus do you need to reach? Who will be the consensus who says, you know what, yes, this is how the quarter transaction is being valid or not. So blockchain for business requires trust to be established between participants. And what we are seeing across the board, these are becoming some very important key elements, right? We keep talking about trade disruption, we keep talking about digital economy and all. Digital economy is amazing because technically everything supposedly is going on the phone. I'm no more kind of going, walking up to banks and putting passbooks and all. Well, who do you trust? Who's, where is your data actually going? Who is the custodian of my data? If I'm doing a workout every day and tracking my steps, who's reading that information? How is the information being shared by the government? How is healthcare people looking for that? What do you do with that data? The questions, the questions that we ask some of the leading telecoms companies that day, as well as to the banks that I do a transaction on my phone where I buy something from Amazon, where I buy something from, uh, let's say, or, or the other sites like Facebook or whatever else be the case. I do my transaction over the phone and you as a bank help me to do the transaction. My question is, what do you make out of it? What is the money that you're making out of the fact that I'm doing a transaction on Amazon? Yes, there is a data charge, there's a transaction charge, but is that's all that we're going after? Blockchains have a capability of connecting to different industries across industries and exploring and making platforms much bigger. Why can't we as banks and telecom companies all come together and become the providers across the board? And that's, I think, in some cases what some part Jignesh is going to actually discuss. Long and short, blockchains will cause disruption because they will give you new revenue models. And the idea to think of a blockchain is that on day one, I want to cost optimization. I want to save efficiencies. But if I get transparency, mostly I am going to grow new revenue. At this point of time, we are seeing that, you know what, a lot of the organizations are very actively trying to get into blockchain. And the question that they keep asking us is, okay, fine, you know what, I understand that blockchain will help me to build trust. We'll kind of come new uh, streams altogether. But where do I start? What should be my starting point? And I'm going to give an example of the whole starting point, actually, also in some cases of the idea being that today in my same auto example, I auto, um, an automatic gives me the base, the tires to, I'm a tire manufacturer, I get a request for supply chain finance. If I was a truck, if I was a logistics warehouse person, can I start a blockchain, including the banks, including the auto manufacturers and the tire manufacturers? The answer is absolutely not. The role that you actually play becomes critically important, which is why, uh, financial institutions, telecom operators, large scale OEMs are taking the lead in building these blockchain solutions altogether. And some of the reasons why they're doing this is of course, the benefits that blockchain provides. 
cryptography immutability immutability being the key the amount of money that's basically spent in compliance functions altogether or control functions that pretty much goes away cryptography i do want to address this up front also from a security as well to date whatever stories we keep hearing about blockchains or or exchanges being hacked what you're hacking is the password for somebody trying to get into the wallet blockchain is never being hacked to say a blockchain being hacked is like saying the internet has been hacked no people hack your gmail password to get into your gmail people that way hack the wallet so that they can get into your crypto accounts but a blockchain as a protocol to date is not being hacked so only pretty crystal clear that yes the security is a very important element of how blockchains actually function the idea that all the participants have a single source of truth that they have come on business blockchain for trusted data and own the data i can decide what i want to share with which participant operational efficiency because of no reconciliations are some of the leading benefits of blockchains actually work and this is why enterprise blockchains are becoming more and more of a reality because it kind of removes a lot of the significant redundant costs of there are risk also to it no technology does not come with the risk at this point, if you give me wrong data to put in a blockchain it's going to be garbage in garbage out then the data is going to be contaminated at the same point of time when when we have created these blockchains if you don't actually put in the right type of governance for example let's take a scenario we do a trade finance blockchain in bangladesh we get five banks on board right the five banks come on board we create the blockchain what happens to the sixth bank that comes on board if the six uh, let's say each of these banks put a hundred dollars right we got five hundred dollars in the bank we created it when the whole technology is up when the sixth bank comes on board how much should they pay should they pay hundred let's assume they pay hundred who divides that hundred dollars tomorrow the blockchain technology needs to be changed who will take the decision of taking the change the government introduces a new regulation how will we incorporate that change what if one of the bank wants to leave the blockchain now how will you address it because technically blockchain data is immutable you cannot delete the data now bank wants to leave how do you establish that these are risk which have to be very clearly articulated initially that means the most difficult part of blockchain is not the technology it's the governance and the business thought process which is in some cases why we were so appreciative of the session that you guys are helping us have when you as ctos when you guys as technocrats basically get requests from your business well ask the business such questions have they thought about it because this is not about the technology the technology will be done and that's i think what people like us are for but otherwise these are some very fundamental questions that need to be answered considerations again when we have so we started work i'm going to talk about some of the use cases right we please when we started working with the telecom use case in india or even the uh, the so we actually have currently also a trade finance consortium called we trade the 17 banks across european union that actually try to do these transactions the questions was always asked like do i really need a blockchain when we started working with telecom regulator in india we went through every possible technology for one year the process of deduction can i use an mdm solution can i use a centralized database if i have a centralized database who governs centralized database if i want security a standalone security solution what are the apis who's going to manage the apis bandwidth infrastructure data residency other regulations what can you achieve with other technology these are just some of the thought process that probably need to come on board and what we said the starting point is how is your governance going to work that is the prime what is your business value model what are you trying to achieve again the difference what participants need to understand is when i am looking when i have a reconciliation problem in my firm when i have a security problem i look inside my organization absolutely inside when i'm doing blockchain I'm looking outside my organization which is what your ecosystem actually is which means a good governance model a business value and the technology design becomes critically important and these are thought that you need to think up front not later also what are you trying to create in the end of the day are you trying to create a solution that is going to be a market differentiator like what ipdc is done right i want to create transparencies i want to create a solution that goes across suppliers i'm reaching out to manufacturers i'm connecting my clients ecosystem i may probably get more difference a, a better penetration in the market i can go to tier 2 tier 3 suppliers altogether is that what i'm creating well that could be one way 
Now for that, you generally have ecosystem participants who probably are all different parts of the business. IPDC is into finance and financing. They are supply, yeah, manufacturers are basically into RMG and suppliers could be much multiple. That's their first case. Your market utility, right? A trade finance utility, for example. That means all banks come together. They all have come together as peers and they want to create one specific utility. Would that be the reason? Or a new market at all altogether? We have a use case example where actually you have a AXA, the insurance company in, um, in France, they actually tied up with the Charles de Gaulle airport and they tied up with the airport system. When you buy your tickets, you buy insurance for a ticket, the, the company directly gets data from the airline, from the airport. Two hours delay, you get paid your insurance. Four hours delay, you get paid your insurance. No paperwork, very clean product altogether. But we've always had travel insurance. When have we had instant payment? The market is basically boomed aggressively for them. So blockchains are not just old technologies for reconciliation. They're actually new revenue opportunities. And most cases, if you don't find optimization possibility and you don't find a new revenue opportunity for blockchain, you're using the wrong technology. Then please don't consider blockchain. And that is critical for In this case. That's what the business final design is. <clears throat> so, and again, what we also, if we were trying to do an insurance blockchain also, and a banking blockchain for KYC, a very big idea, right? Today, at least I can talk about India, there are six different ID systems in India. When I go to bank one for checking account, a different ID system. When I go to bank one to a different ID system, a different for a taxation. Why am I doing this whole KYC process again and again and again and again? Why can't things be actually shared? It can only be shared when everybody shares. Otherwise, blockchains will defeat their purpose in the end. So yes, it requires that we reach a common ground and that's part of the governance and business value design. And that's where in some cases the government has to play a very active role also in this. Otherwise, blockchain is gonna be actually failing. So they, and I think where, the, where all the participants coming together, there are typically, you have to understand it, each participant has to be incentivized. I cannot ask a participant to come onto blockchain just because everybody else is doing it. And generally what we've done is when we work with private and public blockchains or other with governments as well as financial institutions, what is one each partner coming for? And I'm sorry, I keep going back to IPDC example, but you have to think about the fact, right? IPDC started a blockchain because they saw new revenue opportunities. My supply OEM came on the same blockchain because they saw operational efficiency. My purchase order is getting tracked. My invoice is getting tracked. My delivery is getting tracked. I don't know any reconciliations. So the, my supplier basically came on board because he was getting his money faster. My logistics guy was coming on board because now he could prove his performance altogether and also could get sponsorships basically for his pre-production financing. Every participant had an advantage. Blockchains are symbiotic solutions. Now let's put the government in this. Well, the government came on board because I wanted to improve citizen experience. That's what the telecom blockchain in India is. It's improving citizen experience because the government's motive is non-profit while the business motive is profit. How do you kind of merge these ideas and bring them together? Well, centralized solutions will not give you that benefit. That's where blockchain probably going to do it much better. Uh, one of the key topics that I wanted to kind of cover about is the central bank, the digital currencies. A lot has been said about digital money. A lot has been covered on digital money. And while cryptocurrencies have been I want to say, I want to say the most notorious use case, but also the well-proven use case, what we are seeing evolve from there is the fact that, you know what, digital money is becoming a real reality, right? There is, well, globalization is pretty much on the fastest track at this point of time because of the internet connectivity, right? Especially now that COVID has actually come in, the idea will be able to sit or work from home or do online transactions <coughs> has actually got about fourfold. Okay, how do I trust these transactions? What's my sustainability? How do I control and see where the money is actually going in? Who are my players? I got, I got startups coming in left, right, and center. It's a very complex network of players, right? And generally, when I'm using cross currency transactions, I'm paying yet heavy fines and heavy dues basically for it. How is this all going to work? Who do you trust? Is SWIFT going to be the only answer? Well, it takes about three days for a transaction to actually happen. So I'm going to do instant transactions altogether. How can other participants become an active role? How will you stand up against the startups who are coming in and providing these quick fix solutions? Who governs these startups? It's actually creating a scenario where probably getting destated, you're basically creating a, a, a kind of an economic crisis because of the instability that's coming on, right? 
there also the lack of transparency just because a payment provider comes up are you going to trust it tomorrow can you actually create a scenario which basically gives me more transparency by just using blockchain the probably answer is yes you can and how has it already been proved if the digital if the cryptocurrency had come in the governments were saying they were not very federal because they didn't have a visibility into it what if we create a digital currency which is controlled by the government and can be managed by the government for the purposes of transparency for the purposes of standardization for the purposes of economic uh, stability could that be a successful idea well that's where the thought process is and the reaction has been quite supportive tons oh, I, do, i don't have to say the exact number but central banks across the world are considering how to use this currency white papers being done pocs being actually done concepts being thought through governance being thought through everybody is actually thinking about what exactly because we have realized one point of fact that if i am a central bank i need to consider digital currency because you know what if i don't do it there are enough organizations like facebook like libra right who will do it anyway are you going to get stepped out how are you going to manage your energy arbitrage your whole idea of a central bank is to control my monetary policy or the supply of money if you don't if you lose that control what exactly is the role that you will do as a central bank i have fast moving startups coming up every second day how do i regulate these startups how do i create a stand regulation that tomorrow all ids for a central digital currency transaction has to go from one particular place well you need to start moving fast on that likewise today you cannot tra trace a transaction around bitcoin it's absolutely impossible if i create a central bank digital currency can i trace that the answer is yes the idea that to kind of disrupt these parallel economies that are coming up to reduce the risk of these new companies or new startups that technology failures tomorrow i think we've heard enough all of us have heard enough about the exchanges of bitcoin exchanges or cryptocurrency exchanges going down what can you do about it nothing absolutely nothing can i control the technology or can i control the stability of it the answer is yes and that's why central banks are very seriously considering digital currency what are they trying to basically do it for what are my key issues for basically what am i trying to basically do is manage your fundamental central bank's objectives right i want to have currency issuance right why because i want to basically have financing if i want to make sure that i'm giving subsidies to everybody in the house on the country how do i make sure they actually getting the money well financial exclusion that's one of the biggest challenge central banks give money the money never reaches the people who actually need to come get it so monetary stability mr jitan yes mr jitan you will have to you have only 2 minutes more time okay fine uh, thank you uh, i'm not going to go into details but the idea is like again these are fundamental objectives of central banks regulation being the central clearing house blockchains help across the board they basically help you to track currency clear currency track to be maintain transparency all the fundamentals of what you want to do with money so can actually central bank currencies be issued on blockchain the answer is absolutely yes can it work across a participation of public and private players the answer is absolutely yes and i think that's the importance why cbdc is one of the biggest place that we are seeing i'm going to skip this slide but these are just some of the examples of ibm is actually working for it and let's be honest i want to bring this up because we initially step stayed away from cryptocurrencies but we are very much looking forward to working with central bank currencies because that's going to key for us in the end and how we see uh, uh as we have just two minutes i'm just going to some of the big case studies right again please do not forget very first thing what are we trying to solve is there a network that needs to be solved and a need for trust i'm going to use one example for this a problem that we don't need solving in at least in india we have this called the npci the national payment clearing corporation right fantastic solution absolutely fantastic solution now if i go to them and say no you should use blockchain for rtgs and imps they're like but what's the problem you're trying to solve i don't have a problem the system works absolutely fine it's state of the art can i use a blockchain no why do you need blockchain question being if it's not broken do not fix it some other good blockchain use cases that we have seen in financial services across the board supply chain finance my favorite one actually dealer financing trade financing remittances loyalty management dispute resolutions across capital markets security settlement compliance use cases my best also market utilities digital identity this is a fundamentally massive use case that can go across network space again but these are some of the big use cases that we are seeing across financial services and my last not least some other ones which we have done of course walmart food tr food trust which is farm to fork use case our trade lens which is the whole travel transport use case and then these are just these are just some of the sample networks we actually have when i say a network 
these are consortiums which already have about at least 10 to 20, 10 to 100 participants already actively working for one particular thing. Blockchains are real and they are here now. This is not a five-year-old, five-year-later technology. This technology is pretty much coming to you now. And I think that's where I think the active participation is required. I will actually end the slide with a thank you again. I hope what uh, my session was informative for you, all of you, in terms of how to think through a business blockchain problem. Of course, these are our contacts. My contacts are here. And of course, Ananto is with you all in Dhaka. So whatever you guys need from us, we'll be more than glad to have a more detailed conversation with all of you. So thank you for that session. Thank you. Thank you, Jitin, for your beautiful presentation. But we have got a few requests from our participant is that if you can share your presentation for the for, for that so that we can we can send it to everyone. Sure, so Ananto. I will send it to you and then you can share it for the headpiece. Yeah, okay? yeah. Thank, okay. sure. thank you so much for, for elaborate discussion. And if you could give you more time, it would be better. But we have few panelists and other speakers too. So uh, that's why. Uh, no, I, pre I appreciate the time that's given. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. But for the participants who have joined, actually we can accommodate only 100 people in our Zoom. We have already 95 here. So people look, we can accommodate five. Five more people in our Facebook live, there are more than 4,000 who are actually listening to this. So this is going to be a very interesting session. But uh, I now I would like to give you an idea that what we have done so far, CPU Forum has conducted, actually this is our 10th online event. Our first event was on digital transformation in COVID-19, technology drive business sustainability and growth on 30th May 2020. Role of artificial Artificial intelligence in COVID-19 pandemic situation, 6 June 2020. Role of IT in banking during COVID, 18 June. Transformation of the organizational culture during COVID. Cyber crime and data breach during pandemic. Role of IT for uninterrupted telecom service. Leaders thought in new normal era. Drive business value during pandemic. Transformation business with cloud in fintech with rapid innovation, and today is for blockchain. So, our actually speaker, Mr. Tired, you can see him on the screen. I will ask him a question, but before that, I would like to introduce some of the important person of our CTO forum. He is Mr. Monitu Rahman, Deputy Managing Director of uh, IFIC Bank, Mr. Kamal, Head of IT of NBN. I can see Mahbub Jaman Bhai, who was the ex-president of BASIS. We, are, we welcome you all. We have here Mr. Jigen Karia, I think after Tahir, we will give him. Now, uh, Tahir, I have a question for you. Will uh, blockchain replace traditional ERP system gradually or both technology coexist? What do you think about that? Actually, sir, uh, blockchain is a digital uh, digital ledger technology uh, that means uh, the uh, speaker told say, say it is the shared technology but it is it is having the immutability on such as provenance and cryptography technology all this integration that makes it is a very tempered uh, secured uh, for digital transformation actually we are trans transforming from one digital platform to another digital platform that has just uh, introduced a fourth generation industrial revolution what ago so we have no doubt and we are not uh, just a, uh, we are not a, we are aware of the digital laser technology but my question is that uh, erp and uh, uh, digital laser technology or blockchain can be coexist because say we are using now uh, uh, RTGS, then uh, then then BFT, and we can also thinking uh, or or creating some use cases so that we can deploy the blockchain in our uh, EKYC. We can deploy the blockchain in our uh, RTGS, uh, BFT, and so that the transaction can be more secure uh, while the data will be decrypted in our end or in in the central bank end. so blockchain the blockchain will not replace the erp erp and blockchain can be coexist that is erp can be reshaped with the use of 
ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी आईपी ओके ताहिर ओके ताहिर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर आंसर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू गो अगेन टू आवर आईपीएम स्पीकर मिस्टर गिनेश कारिया executive architect and master inventor of ibm mr ginesh can you hear me mr ginesh kariya mr ginesh kariya my question is how end user get benefit of organization move to blockchain technology mr ginesh kariya of ibm Please unmute Mr. Ginesh Kariya. Please unmute Mr. Ginesh Kariya. Ginesh, can you hear? Yeah, but I can hear. Yes, Ginesh, you are unmuted now. Ganesh, we have unmuted you from our side. Probably it's it, this is problem from your side. Ganesh, is it okay to you, or you set your one? Okay, Ganesh, we will come back to you again. Now, I would like to go to our Secretary General, Mr. Muhammad Ali. Mr. Muhammad Ali, please unmute, Mr. Muhammad Ali. Ganesh, are you okay? Ganesh, are you okay now? Ganesh. Okay, then unmute Mr. Muhammad Ali. I can see head of IT of SIBL. Uh, is unmute Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is here. If not, then I will go to our Mr. Bikor Nagosh, our second vice president and secretary of ICT Ministry. The additional secretary of ICT Ministry, Mr. Bikon Nagos, I found you un unmuted. Please, you tell something, your experience about the blockchain, what we have heard so far. Okay, can you? Mr. Am I audible to you? Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am amazed with the deliberation, Mr. Shitam S. Chengarani. Thank you very much. You, you are really a very good speaker and as well as a blockchain expert. So we need uh, you people uh, to, to increase our capacity. Um, uh, keep in mind the fourth industrial revolution, blockchain as a disruptive technology. Uh, we, we don't have any alternatives. It is going to transform the whole, uh, the, the transformation of the whole economic system of the world. And um, uh, we need to follow that. Otherwise, we will be lost. But the problem is that each and every point having two sides. One side, as we described, is a very bright and brilliant, very good perspective. The other side is not like that. Each and every technology having its risk, risk also, particularly the security. And um, in, in, our, uh, in our country, uh, particularly the citizen is not much uh, having uh, capacity to practice the, uh, the digital currency. Our central bank, even our government, is not right now ready to practice it immediately. So I think 
the first and foremost is to improve our capacity. So by this time, um, uh, I am not uh, talking about the central bank, but as the uh, ICD division, I am working over there, uh, it's just the start of the block, blockchain. We are applying blockchain in a very limited way, not in currency, but in different uh, certification of different, say, public examination. You know, the, uh, we have the SSC, we have the ACS exam, we have the graduation. We are trying to introduce the, uh, the, the, the certification, authenticity of the certification right now. And the central government might be more at risk. And in addition, in uh, keeping right. in the corona period, the COVID period, uh, that has given one step ahead towards the fourth industrial revolution. We are moving fast towards the uh, technology and use of ICT in our daily life. And uh, digital currency is also one of that. So uh, COVID has thinking, COVID is thinking right now to increase the capacity. And as part of that, uh, a, as part of the strategy, a few labs, uh, government is going to, going to establish in different universities so that our um, young stars will be more, having more capacity when they come out from the university. And uh, on also the, the, the government part and also the uh, central government part, they are trying to, they are trying to adopt the procedure and but right now, um, to be honest, we are not ready to introduce it in our currency takes time. We are trying, but it will be a, it will be a chaos. It will be a hue and cry uh, right now if you practice, because you know, uh, just a couple of years back, we lost a huge amount of money from the central bank because of our uh, capacity deficiency. We are not going to repeat it uh, time and again, time and again. So definitely, we will practice, we will adopt uh, the blockchain, but right, not right now. We need to develop our capacity first. We need help of people like you, and then we have to. We have. To. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chandon. Uh, we are looking for a very capacity uh, development and uh, uh, help from people like you who are working on the behalf of IBM. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Papun Shaka, for anything very, very wonderful, uh, uh, the blockchain uh, uh, web seminar, and also other participants on behalf of the government. I, uh, I thank you all the people and have a very, very good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Ghosh, additional secretary to ministry mm -hmm. and our second vice president. Now I would like to give floor to our first vice president, Mr. Mohishundul Alam, who is the DG of Telecom Ministry, DOIT. So now over to Mr. Mohishundul Alam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Okay, thank you. Respected founder president, Mr. Kapan Gandhi Shorkar, and the keynote speaker, Mr. Jitan A. Sandonani, IBM uh, blockchain leader, India and South Asia region. Thank you very much for your nice pre presentation. And we have present also the Mr. Bigodo Kumar Ghosh, Advanced Secretary, ICT Division, Mr. Chaki Roshan, Executive Director, Bangladesh Bank, Mr. Muhammad Ali, Additional Manager Director, Kubali uh, Bank Limited, and Mr. Tahir Ahmed Chaudhary, Deputy Managing Director, Islamic Bank, and Mr. Abdul Al Mamun, Deputy Managing Director, UCPL, and Mr. Jignesh Karia, Executive oh, Architect and Master Investor, IBM. IBM and here also Mr. Gopal Chandra, our advisor also presents and the participants who are watching this uh, seminar, this discussion online, uh, everything, thanks uh, everyone. So uh, here the topics is blockchain for business. Blockchain, blockchain technology is the, uh, one of the most promising upcoming technological trends in IT domain. Blockchain, blockchain means block and chain. What does it mean? This, uh, does it mean block and chain? Block means block as the on the, on the three part. This is uh, the data, the next uh, hashing, the previous hashing also, and the connecting blockchain. So blockchain is the open ledger. Open ledger records errors and if data faces, uh, data faces and keep those errors that validation. This block, this block references the previous block and the hashing function. And blockchain is kind of a database and the blockchain distributed. Laser distributed existing multiple computers. They are also at the same time, it's shared by multiple computers. So, 
blockchain uh, in validation is individual and cannot temper anybody. So all transaction in the data in the block is preserved uh, as a temporal uh, permanently and then added the information permanently. So anyone of the network can check. So anybody can check the ledger and see the same transaction history. So blockchain is a kind of independent, transparent, and permanent database. So and move multiple location. Because government, entrepreneurs, business people, banks, all have attention in this. So somebody mixing the Bitcoin and uh, the blockchain. Blockchain, Bitcoin is the product of blockchain. So blockchain is the is the decentralized latest network technology. So that we can use the blockchain and the blockchain. Why you, why we use blockchain? What is the benefit? Benefited because if we use the blockchain, then it can save time, save money, reduce risk, increase trust. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chandani already uh, described presented that the limitation of enterprise uh, enterprise uh, institution that the that the. Uh, the inefficient and expensive and vulnerable. Is a, uh, so I think in blockchain, everything is increasing. So it can trust, it can increase trust. So we need the uh, no need central authority or third party to make it. As example, but we, we, if we think very simply blockchain, or why in why place in Bangladesh we can use blockchain. Anybody when the topics, uh, the discussion blockchain, blockchain, then they act mixing it with the Bitcoin, with the, uh, with the Ethereum. No, Bitcoin is separate, blockchain is separate. Uh, broker, so cryptocurrency transition may be, may be made by uh, through the blockchain, but it's uh, different. As for example, if we want to, if blockchain network is established, then any person want to land, try buy land uh, or sell land, then uh, through the blockchain, oh, we can easily see the who is the previous owner of this land, how long they have stayed in this position, and when the last renovation was done in this land or plot, so, and lastly, who is owning this property. And every information is encrypted, is preserved, and no one can be tempered. So if we, in Bangladesh, blockchain for business, or we can use uh, blockchain in every, in any places like, or like uh, simply if, we, if I want to uh, get the specific blood group. So what, now what's the position? Now I can go to, I, I, I have to communicate the hospital, many hospitals, and I have to uh, communicate the blood banks, and also see the same foundation. But if the blockchain network is established, then anybody can see, but can get the information from his room, from his office, from his uh, house. No, uh, no communication, no need to go there. And this will be cheap, and this will be the actual, and this will be no, uh, no tempering data is there. So we have to go uh, ahead and we have to uh, go through this and we have to think in Bangladesh in how, in, in which way uh, we have to implement. Mr. Chandan had already described that the income sector, but telco sector, they have, they have, they have in, uh, this network may be established. And so that the, uh, the subscriber, the customer, those who are uh, getting, uh, voting by using telephone, mobile, they will get the actual information that no, uh, Tempering there and uh, every position. Why, when this uh, industry, in the telco industry started, what's his position? What's his uh, goal? What's his target? And everything, everything he can say. So, in Bangladesh, um, like our Bangladesh, is, um, uh, in, is anybody wants to uh, do as a business. So, what's, uh, what's the need? He, he requires many bank, bank documents. He records many bank documents, but uh, and the, he have no uh, such records. Yeah. So without involving third party, is it 
now it is uh, impossible uh, to uh, do business. But if a person wants to do business in Bangladesh, then he has to collect many taxes, many licenses, many documents from various organizations. So it uh, requires, it needs many time, many uh, money, and many hazard. So if we, uh, in government level, as a government level, if we do think that, that the, we want to make, we want to uh, uh, provision this uh, blockchain network, so I think this very quickly we can achieve. Any organization also can do this. So, so uh, every, uh, and what, what is the result? result? Every public document available in the, for the persons. Bank can issue everything. So government, government will have transparency in the business uh, blockchain technology. So people, people will be benefited. And if in this, uh, in, in this hour in our country, let this technology grow in this area, and then huge amount of resources will be available. So lastly, I, I believe blockchain technology have more potential to change the way this world, and I've been working in so many centuries and make it a better place to everyone nicely and peacefully. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Moshin Bhai, for your beautiful, beautiful speech. And now we have two foreign speakers. If we can manage time, we will give it to them. One is from India, Mr. Yavinder Singh. Another is Mr. Kenny E. He is from Malaysia. He is a, um, Kenny E. is a blockchain expert. So if we can, if time permit, we will also hear from Mr. Kenny E of Malaysia and finally Mr. Yavinder Singh, we will hear from you. Now I would like to go to Mr. Jigesh, Jigesh Karyak, are you, are you now, you, you, you are unmuted now? Hello everyone, can you yeah, hear yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. hear you, please Thank go you. ahead. Um, apologies for the, for the inconvenience. Hello. Can you hear me, guys? Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. What was the question? Hello. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. He's asking for sorry, the sorry, I was <laughs> after you <laughs> I was muted. No issue. My question to you is how end user get benefit and organization can move quickly to blockchain technology. My first question is how user can be benefited by by adopting blockchain. And number two question is, how organization can move fast to blockchain technology? As you know, that everyone has fear about the blockchain. That many organization is trying for a long time to adopt blockchain with many partners and others. But my question is that, what are the benefits for the users and what are the benefits for the organization so that they can adopt technology without fear and without uh, safely? So can you tell us? Yeah, so uh, thanks for the question and it's very important to understand both the sides of the prism when it comes to blockchain as to how does it benefit the end user as well as the organization who is implementing a blockchain network, right? So uh, look at it from a, a consumer or an end user perspective. Now, let's talk about the example that uh, Jitan spoke about in the telecom industry, right? We did unsolicited commercial communication. Now, before blockchain was put into the telecom industry, whenever there was an unsolicited commercial communication which was sent to the customer, and he complained that, okay, I did not opt for receiving a communication from McDonald's, right? The complaint used to get registered onto the telecom uh, network, but it used to take more than 15 days to call that particular complaint, right? Now, when it is put on, when every transaction is recorded onto the blockchain, right everything is available for the what you call call center agent to look at when the transaction happened who initiated that transaction 
when was it done was it a legitimate uh, transaction was it according to the rule right now the complaint gets resolved immediately now this is one of the one of the prime examples wherein end user is getting benefited out of this entire blockchain network mm -hmm. now look at from the other side when i have it uh, what you call when an organization lays a blockchain network now there are multiple factors that uh, uh, mr alam also spoke about that it is immutable there is a historical record of all the transactions you can have an audit of who had initiated that particular transaction when did it happen you can apply business rules at the top of those transactions and resolve any queries or any solution that can be done at the top of it in a in a shorter time frame right so that that's the benefit that you look at have from a end consumer and an organization perspective Was I audible? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mohammed Ali. Now I will go to you, Mr. Mohammed Ali, Edition Managing Director of Mumbai Bank and our Secretary General of CQ Forum. Can you hear me? Yes, I clearly hearing you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. My question is to you. In current financial system, regulation, monetary exchange policies in Bangladesh, how relevant is it to important blockchain technology? So I'm not the present regulation. Uh, from the uh, 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 regulator's perspective, basically there is no bar or uh, there is no limitation of implementing blockchain technology in the banking systems. Uh, the bar that we have, it is basically to introduce the bit in the uh, market. So uh, this is the from the regulation part because many banks basically they applied for blockchain, adapting blockchain technology for financial, uh, mobile financial services. And uh, they uh, formally, the Bangladesh Bank informed that basically it doesn't require any uh, approval because uh, Bangladesh Bank has not imposed any restriction on that. This is the uh, one aspect uh, from the uh, regulation aspect. From the banking perspective, as I am representing the banking industry, uh, basically uh, the uh, security strength and the strength of blockchain technology aspect, basically a uh, bank will have to adapt uh, the technology even the sooner the better. That is from my aspect. And uh, it can be from the uh, basically, uh, if you see that uh, those who are working on that uh, fintech organization, or maybe those who are developing the core banking solution as a whole, they can also migrate to the blockchain technology. And even those who are in the giant industry, like uh, Oracle and others, those who are basically giving us the uh, database platform, they can also uh, shift their database platform to blockchain technology, or they may have some modules to adapt on that. So this one, this is the aspect because uh, when we say that uh, from the banking industry and uh, from the uh, customers, basically, just if I want to give you an example regarding uh, 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 that, uh, if we say the post grad border transaction, like when we committed uh, financial, uh, when we made a commitment to the importer or exporter regarding LCs, uh, and uh, uh, so then now. What is happening? Those who are basically uh, importer or exporter, they are communicating with the corresponding bank, banks, and then banks basically assuring them that, that the payment will be done. From the blockchain aspects, what can be the buyer and uh, seller basically they can they can negotiate with the blockchain packet uh, and uh, with the blockchain technology, and basically those who are the actors on that, the so financial organizations, they will have that information. So that can bind a contract between all the parties. Uh, so uh, based on that contract, 
what is required? Basically, then that transaction will happen automatically. So it does not require further assurance from the bank to pay. As, as a result, basically, what will happen? The commission and uh, uh, that we are charging for the customer, they can get relief on that, and consumers in turn they will get the products in lower prices. The problem is that uh, now the the rules and regulations that we have. Uh, in terms of uh, for ICC, those are basically dealing with the uh, uh, cross-border transactions that need require some modification. And uh, uh, other technologies, those who are basically dealing with the cross-border uh, in limited scale, uh, uh, with some asset that they are also doing that. But uh, from uh, border scale sweep and other commitments that we are uh, dealing with, we also adapt the technology. And uh, this is one aspect. Another is that the relationship that we have with the corresponding banking, like um, JP Morgan or any other bank, HSBC, Centaur, or uh, basically in our case, we have around 100 correspondence relationship with 100 banks. And as we have the large, one of the uh, largest commercial bank in Bangladesh, we have the largest commercial private commercial bank. So in this aspect, so we have huge network, <clears throat> and we we have. Really RMA with the, uh, so many banks and exchange houses. So they will have also have to adapt. So it will be a synchronized one. All the actors and all the organizations wish to be uh, adapt this technology and then basically a uh, whole uh, scenario will adapt in holistic level. So, but the progress so far basically for uh, uh, fintech organizations and, uh, 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 and uh, blockchain is basically is a uh, is it the case is very good is, uh, in terms of most of the big organizations they have adopted uh, they have uh, or, and not adapt basically they have made a research tool and development tool so that they can incorporate the technology so it has given a use in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, so we have as having a, uh, all the whole the community basically having very interested to have that technology and know the technology, so awareness is going on, and uh, hoping that basically financial, if you say financial organization and banks, basically if we want to implement digital banks, and branchless banks, and plasticless banks, and any anything like this, then basically blockchain can lead also in this area. So, uh, and I... I think, uh, and if the central banks of different countries as well as Bangladesh take uh, initiative for digital currency, then blockchain will move further ahead. And then basically this will go to the grassroots level and consumer level because they, they will use that technology in their day-to-day -day affairs sales and buy. So, uh, uh, so, one of the, uh, so I don't think so, there is any regulatory limitations implementing blockchain technology except cryptocurrency and uh, as no no one in the world is into the digital currency so we are also central uh, no central so we are also waiting for that uh, to someone will take the lead and then basically all the whole world may basically jump on it and take part on that Sabunda, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed Ali, for your beautiful presentation. Now I will go to Mr. Abdul Al Mahmoud, Deputy Managing Director of UCBL Bank and our VC member. Is Mr. Mahmoud Bhai, what do you think that blockchain technology disrupt the existing business models? Do you think that blockchain may disrupt existing business uh, models? Uh, thank you, Takunda. I think I am audible. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think I will start with a story. Lots of high-end uh, discussions going on, technology jargons. So let's tell me a, a tell, a, let, us, let me tell you a story. Uh, during the time of global economic recession in 2008, a visitor traveled to a, a you know remote city. The city was very depressed, lifeless. It was a depressed morning because of the serious economic crisis causing almost halting 
to every business, starting from small to large in all spectrums. So the visitor walked down into a nearby hotel and asked the hotel manager for a room. And manager told the visitor that they have uh, 400 plus rooms and all are available. So the visitor requested uh, that, okay, can I pick my preferred room? And the manager said, most welcome, but uh, you need to deposit $100 in advance. Well, the visitor gladly deposited that $100 note and went up to find a room for his own. After receiving the money, the hotel manager immediately called the butcher who used to provide the meat to hotel and to whom the hotel owns a debt of $100. And once the, uh, after getting the money from the hotel manager, the butcher then rushed to the farm from where he bought the cattle. To hotel. But, and he still, he also owes uh, about $100 to the farm owner. And the farm owner, after getting the money, rushed to the nearby rich neighbor from whom he borrowed $100 for buying the cattle foods. And the rich neighbor immediately resembled that, well, he also owned about $100 to the hotel where he hosted a family gathering. So he rushed to the hotel and made a payment of $100 to the hotel manager. And meanwhile, the visitor completed the visit of all the rooms available here and there and then came down to hotel manager and said, okay, sorry, gentlemen, I, uh, I didn't like any of your room. I would like to get the return of my money. Well, hotel manager already got back that $100 that routed through. So he returned the money to the visitor. The same $100 note went through a loop of five owners and ended up to the original owner, but the process cleared four loans of the payments. This is a metaphor, of course. And I think this metaphor answers many of the uh, questions I have been seeing in the chat box. And as well as it maybe, I presume it complement also to Jitan, who wanted to also say some of the case, uh, so, I mean, study, this study, which he could not because of the shortage of time. This is actually, this uh, metaphor actually depicted a typical close knitted societal and holistic payment ecosystem involving the multiple stakeholders and physical cash. It's actually a life cycle of money. Now, coming back to the question of uh, Topanda, whether how blockchain will contribute, all of you can now understand this digital, if the payment system would have been the crypto digital, it could contribute in many ways. People, stakeholders to the value chain that I narrated in the story would not There would have been transparency, there would have been accountability, there would have been a record, which, would, which, which is immutable as mentioned by presenters. Now the direct answer to Tapunda, whether it, how the blockchain will contribute to the business model. Yes, it is, but to be more precise, uh, it will contribute to entire ecosystem and every value chains of the ecosystem of the business model. And I don't want to get into every details because most of the speakers already spoke about the areas. But one of the areas that I would like to talk about is your cross-border payment. Here is the governance, uh, governance framework it's already spoke about. And again, the multi-stakeholders involvement are here. There is a buyer, there is a seller, there is a pay bank, there is a beneficiary bank, there is customs, there are bills of lading, there are bills of entry, many documentations and everything are involved. And in between, there are cyber volatility, there are money laundering issue. How do you manage it? How to strike a balance? I think that I, it's my personal thinking. I have been thinking there should be some international convention might be or maybe promulgated by BIS, Banks for International Settlement, the way they did for Basel III. I think uh, from any local government initiative, 
from any institutional initiative, many of the governance issues will not be addressed until and unless this is internationalized. And I think BIS is one of the very established institutions that can take control to create a common platform the way uh, IBM actually created their Vetavia. Uh, that's, that was a pilot base. I think I don't know whether it's continuing or not. I just to cite an example recently, Standard Charter did uh, uh, open an LC through blockchain for Vialatex. Uh, it's actually peer to peer one company to another company in between a bank. But if I have to internationalize this, I mean, export and or import purpose, possibly the pay bank will be, beneficiary bank would be involved into it until and unless into, they are into this shared network of the platform, this entire, com I mean, process will not be completed. Here comes a paradox. So this paradox, I will leave my discussion here, narrating this paradox to Jitan and the specialist of blockchain. The paradox is, Technology is efficient. It is, it is going to revolutionize the future business, especially trade and payment, but then it's costly. It's costly if, if, you, if you ask my, me as an individual for my bank, I'll think 100 times, should I go for blockchain? I think I would not. I'll just speak about just for a while, imagine. Look, think about imagine, okay, haven't they implemented blockchain? I think they're thinking about, but they're not. They have beautiful, uh, you know, uh, transactional things and everything. User um, uh, interfaces are friendly. Transactions are taking place within seconds. Returns are taking place within day. Everything is going good. So why they are not still implementing blockchain? Maybe still they're evaluating. So for my bank, maybe not. But again, the entire ecosystem, as a national ecosystem, there is a blockchain platform, certainly we will join because that is going to bring efficiency, overall cost of transaction, contributes, I mean, enor enormously to and reshaping and revamping the entire business model. So the paradox is, the question may be answered by Jitan, technology is efficient, but it is costly. So how do we really strike a balance? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mamun, for your beautiful day. I think Jigesh, you will leave very soon. So do you, do you want to give a closing statement before yeah, Mr. Jigesh? Hello. Hello, Jigesh, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, Jigesh, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can now. Uh, again, I got into a mute state, right? So I think uh, it was a wonderful session from the entire uh, uh, entire forum that we had, led by Jitan and multiple stakeholders uh, mm -hmm. had given their views in terms of how blockchain is applicable, not only from a, uh, from a technology standpoint, but how does it benefit all the organizations, right? So I think thanks to everybody and uh, I and Jitan or Ananto may be uh, available, uh, post this call as well. If you can just post your questions on mail or on chat, we may be happy to answer them or have a one-on-one -on -one conversations on any topics that you want to have related to blockchain. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think all of you have many questions for Jitin. So, uh, yeah. So before that, I going to the, going to Jitin. I will ask everyone if you have any question, you can put it on chat box so that he can get himself ready. But I don't think he need any any introduction earlier to answer any of your question. But before that, Mr. Moishanul Alo, he wants to speak something. But I have two foreign guests. I would like to give them a floor. Because one foreign guest, he is from Malaysia, so uh, I would like to. He is also very interested. Uh, he is working on blockchain. Mr. Kenny Ye, Vice President, Service Delivery, LAI System, Malaysia. Mr. Mr. Kenny, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, please, yes, please yes. Tell, <laughs> Thank you so uh, much, and we welcome yes, you to our conversation. Yeah.
thank you very much uh, for 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 mr chana for giving me the opportunity to speak to the bangladeshi uh, world right the bangladesh world uh, it, it is in my heart actually uh, i'm very excited actually because i was in bangladesh booking for the uh, bangladesh uh, government right on the road transport systems uh, <laughs> 15 about 10 15 years ago uh, and, and uh, also together with uh, mr azim of your work uh, forum uh, i was in bangladesh for almost a year and i really have very good cultural uh, relationship as well as uh, serious with um, bangladesh is not new to me i really appreciate the government actually help me to and give me a lot of experience in bangladesh especially in it right so um back to the uh, blockchain um just um i'm i'm not an expert so call uh i'm 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 in the research i'm uh, moving forward to the academic, academic of the uh, blockchain right i was in the uh, it industry for 30 years and uh, i'm in a phd of uh, research of the uh, blockchain understand what exactly blockchain is all about i i believe uh, most of the um, participant years have a lot of a query in terms of the uh, blockchain challenges and so forth yes i understand that the uh, blockchain uh, for some of the reason may not be able to mature uh, to meet the uh, the requirement at this point of time i just heard one of the uh, mr mamu right uh, the city bank right i uh, was saying that, uh, that, that 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 we will not consider uh, uh, making that blockchain as a as, as a solution at this point of time right uh, I, i believe that 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 is uh, yeah i mean at this point of time is that blockchain is duplicating transactions So if you have big transactions across the network that is going to be very costly right from the network point of view why are you duplicating transactions because you're duplicating transaction for security point of view or what right but that there are, there are pros and cons that's why we have this kind of a trilemma we call it blockchain trilemma in our definitions we call it uh, what scalability security as well as decentralization we must have this uh, three domain to to balance. we cannot just look it into one factors and say that you know uh, i'll be able to implement blockchain i should not pursue blockchain but what we do here is that in the uh, the development of the blockchain today is no longer what we call a blockchain we are going into the third uh, generations of blockchain right is not the blockchain that we talk about of all transaction in the blockchain so what we did at the, the, the what I call the research we have uh, developed a lot of uh, in the academic as well as the researchers have developed a lot of uh, blockchain technology now we call it that instead of blockchain dl actually blockchain is part of dlt dlt as a whole umbrella carry the uh, blockchain right so this decentralized ledger trans technology so what happened is that uh, blockchain is under the dlt but blockchain is only one of the technology there are other technologies which is contributing the same can perform much faster than blockchain right that that's what we call that uh, this uh, uh, what i call the uh, cyclic graph we call it a cyclic graph directed a cyclic graph so these are the different technology can uh, work what i call perform. 50,000 transactions per second you are talking about that so give you that kind of scalability and same kinds of uh, what i call security right all these are coming into now then back to the bank case is that should we decentralize or centralize that is a very big question to ibm as well so <laughs> i i mean i i heard ibm actually uh, talking about permission and non permission uh, uh, blockchain permissionless or not uh, per, uh, permission based uh there are, there are, there are, there are the two school of thought having the argument say for that because you, we it is blockchain is supposed to decentralize that's the most important thing because once you decentralize you liberate so when you liberalize that that means that more people are coming on board and able to trade and transact that's the reason why but if you are trying to centralize it can i actually 
say that you are more secure than the public trust how do you make the public trust against the government or the a central organization if you are democratize it that means that you you gain more trust in that sense right so there's always a two school of thought and argument uh, critically assessed into these two points. What I'm coming at is that, uh, I think is that in the future, it should be a hybrid solution. I think right now they, they're already in the hybrid solution whereby you can decentralize and centralize as well. Centralize because the bank is supposed to govern that. You need to govern logically, okay? So, um, that's why uh, one of the very famous, uh, what I call, uh, their, their famous uh, researchers who told us that, you know, the decentralized uh, authorization organization, right, DAO, we call it DAO, uh, autonomous organizations, meaning that we can, we can have a decentralized, but there's no such thing. The argument is that you still need the central bank to make all the policy. But physically, the network should be decentralized. That's where the telecommunication coming in. I mean, it, it changed because we have a lot of issues and challenges in blockchain. One of the key issues is not today. It was happened 50 years ago, okay? 20 years ago, we call it cap theorem, okay? So <laughs> consistency, availability, and partitioning. All this cap theorem is that we can't have these three property at the same time. So that's why sometimes, you know, just now we, we hear you, sometimes you don't hear me. You know, all this because of cap theorem. <laughs> the, the, you can see me, but you can't hear me. You know, even how good is your network. So I think the telco today, in this technology, they are they supposed to enhance the telecommunication network to solve this sort of a theorem together, the cap theorem so-called. So, -called. so uh, I think I'm, 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 I'm really... Uh, give a lot <laughs> that I, I can talk about blockchain <laughs> because I read <laughs> about thousand over journals. Uh, we have to do thousand over journals. Uh, my, my one more question to the uh, IBM uh, team, the Hyperledger, right? Uh, uh, the IBM team is that they have like a uh, different kind of a uh, uh, Hyperledger, right? You have uh, what I call uh, Sawtooth, you have- uh, Mr. Mr. Kenny, yeah. Mr. Kenny, yes. Mr. Kenny. Yes. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will. We, I I know you are expert on this, so sometime we will do a big event with you. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I, I, I think this short time this short time is not sufficient for you. So yeah, we need a special day from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> from when uh, from where we can discuss a long with you. So right, I will right. I will I will go to Jitendra again, but before that our. Uh, First Vice President and DOIT, he's in Vashimil Karim. He wants to add something on blockchain. I think he's the last speaker. After that, we will go for question or sir. I am not getting any question. I think Chandani has given such a beautiful presentation. Nobody is daring to ask him any question. But if nobody asks question, then I will have to ask question. So, Mr. Moshin, after that, I will go to Jitain, and we have another friend from India. We will go to him at last. But now over to Mr. Moshinal Kuri. Moshinal Alam, yes. Sorry. Moshinal Alam, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks again, Mr. Jitain. Uh, there was a question. Uh, do, do, do you see the prospects of cryptocurrency trading used in blockchain platform in Bangladesh? Of course. But of course, uh, in Bangladesh, so, uh, we, uh, I agree that uh, there, uh, there is a very much future uh, about uh, cryptocurrency trading. But what is the cryptocurrency trading? Cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency means the uh, the Bitcoin, Ethereum. With, uh, in Bang uh, now, Bangladesh, our government uh, through the, the Foreign Exchange Regulation 1947 and Money Laundering Prevention Act about uh, 2012. Now it's uh, illegal as a Bitcoin and Ethereum transaction in our country. But uh, we make, we, we have to make the uh, uh, blockchain platform. Platform so that uh, earlier we have discussed uh, about the land transfer, uh, land transfer program, our uh, basic needs idea. And there is a, another question, Mr. Uh, there is another question is there, uh, the power grid. 
or the, in the power grid server uh, sector, is there possible to do uh, uh, the blockchain implemented platform? Yes, of course, because uh, we know very well in our country is very uh, scattered. There are about 137 power plants in every uh, district or areas throughout through the, our country. And the power generation like in our country now about 3,700 megawatts. And so in the grid line, grid line, if we make the platform or uh, blockchain platform, then every uh, power plant in uh, different areas where the, where the generation uh, capacity of their power plant and now we, uh, how much they are generating. So uh, in grid area, uh, so we have to know we have to know the all information. So if we if we make the uh, blockchain platform, say so we can easily get that the information uh, very easily, and so that we can manage every power sector in our through our our country in very well. So I think it's uh, it is better. And uh, Mr. Mamun also said that the the blockchain uh, platform is ever. Will be will will help us, but in a different manner. Uh, if we avoid the cryptocurrency, whether the position government, Bitcoin and Ethereum, otherwise bypass this. And uh, digital currency, we need we need digital currency, but we have to make uh, our, according to our government law. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Moshindul Alam, for your beautiful presentation. Now actually. Uh, so we are on the closing phase. Now I will go to Jitan S. Chandani for his last comments. Jitan, probably you have got the got the vibe from our forum members. So what do you want and how you would like to go forward with the blockchain? So what IBM can offer to our CPU forum member uh, that uh, they could be benefited because CTO forum is a forum of professionals. Huh? So blockchain is a new technology coming from IBM. So how you can help us to educate on blockchain and what you can offer for CTO forum member on behalf of IBM so that they can have uh, experience, hands-on experience or any other thing. Uh, can you tell us about that? Sure. So thank you again. Uh, and I think I'm going to answer the question in three different parts. So, uh, I think I started the conversation very much in line with what Kenny said, right? Blockchain is not the answer to all your problems. I'm not trying to solve food hunger with blockchain. I'm not trying to solve all poverty with blockchain. However, there are some use cases that cannot be solved centrally. And as much as we can argue to it will be go blue in our face, there are some solutions that centralized that don't actually work. The idea that, you know what, we can kind of have one central authority with the IT capacity to manage all the network. Well, is that a best and most efficient way to do business? You have to think of blockchain from broader than a technology standpoint. And the idea to think blockchain from a business, from an economic standpoint is how the use case justification will come through. We built a telecom network, absolutely. I have 900 million subscribers whose SMSs go through that network. If telecom regulator had to be the centralized solution, they would be the capacity of IBM. They would have the firepower of IBM. Now, do you expect the government to become an IBM? I think that's an unrealistic expectation. Can I decentralize the responsibility, the liability and the ownership? Yes, that is how efficient networks are established. So no, I don't agree to what Kenny's saying that blockchain is a useless technology. And I think we can, as I said, but the point is, what can IBM give you? I want to have these discussions with you. Tomorrow, if you tell me a use case that, you know what, Jatan, as I said, in India, the use case for payments does not make sense. Why? Because we have a very solid centralized exchange for payments. Help us come and rationalize with you, to think through with you whether a use case should go. And I'm the first one who said that, you know what, 20% of my use cases will go to production. The remaining 80% will fail. What we offer? Let us come and sit down with you because I don't want to sell you technology. I want to solve a business problem with you. So this is not me trying to sell you software. This is not me trying to sell you hardware. If there's not a business problem, we don't want to discuss blockchain because that's a waste. So that's the first, I think, in some cases. Uh, Mamun, sir, I also want to answer the question about cost. Block, if any person tells you 
that blockchain only comes in a fixed stack, then don't please listen to them. Blockchains have to be completely open stack. My telecom network works on on-prem, Amazon, Azure, across the board. My fabric that I use as IBM, I also use open source fabric. Kenny's right. We have five different fabrics and I have an enterprise IBM blockchain fabric. My telecom network works on the open source fabric because my client told me, I don't want to be married to IBM for life. I was like, that's fine. I'll use open source and I'll implement the open source for you. The idea that technically to create a blockchain network for five participants, you need one company. No, that's wrong. Blockchain is modular. I, am de I cannot tell you about decentralization and ask you that you only work with IBM or only work with Accenture, only work with Infosys. I should give you the capability that all five participants, they work with different cloud providers, with different vendors, with different participants. Yes, that's how we build telecom. So yes, we have decentralized the implementation also. And that is the true essence of how the technology should work. So anybody who tells you this is the one platform and everything has to come from one player, I'm sorry, they don't know what they're talking about because I have a living production example for 900 million subscribers that has done that. So that's, I think, in some cases, the difference in how blockchains actually work. It is a decentralized technology. It's not going to solve all your problems in the end, okay? Yes, it, no, I don't believe it's expensive. Why? Because I'm using open source solutions. You have an on-prem solution, I'll use your hardware. I'll use open source fabric. It's only the services cost. The network builder of how fancy we want to make it, how much we want to put into it, is a business case to business example. But I think from a technology standpoint, no, it works actually quite well. Because technically, as I say, right, even if I go to un, uh, open blockchain solution like Bitcoin, all I need is one laptop, and I can jump onto that particular network. So the rationalization of the business case is what of extreme importance. The governance setup, extreme importance. Rest, the technology will be kind of done very easily. And I think that's where we are kind of have evolved as IBM, Asa, because yes, we've done our mistakes. And I think that's what we're taking to our clients right now. And I think with that, I would say would be my closing comments. Again, thank you again for this opportunity. This was a wonderful discussion. Uh, I'm, I like to see the excitement that all of you actually have a thought from the process. So I'm very glad to come to be a part of this. So really thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Jitan, for your beautiful presentation and finally beautiful conclusion. I think there are many questions on uh, chat box and things, but if we want to answer all these things, it will continue a lot. So uh, finally, we have a guest uh, from Avaya, Mr. Yavinder Singh. Our next event will be with Avaya on next Saturday. Mr. Yavinder Singh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Mr. Tapanda. Uh, can you yeah, hear me yeah, fine? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yavinder, uh, so we are at the closing of our this event. We would like to hear from you that uh, on, you can address all our participants what you want to do on our next event on next Saturday. Uh, sure, Tapan, and thank you so much for your uh, for this opportunity. And first, I would like to thank uh, Jitin. It was a, a wonderful presentation and definitely uh, quite informative. Uh, as you have mentioned that blockchain is a definitely a revolutionary uh, technology and it's not limited to just financial transactions or or any other uh, uh, just uh, it's it's a technology that has multiple use cases uh, in avaya we use it for a completely different perspective we map, use it to map customer journeys uh, build ai along with it and provide a completely different customer experience to our customers so that's how we use blockchain. So I think it's, it's uh, definitely a disruptive technology uh, that's going to change the way that we work. Uh, having said that, uh, so I'll, uh, from this forum, uh, I'll want to request uh, the esteemed members of the CTO forum uh, that for, for, an, uh, for the webinar uh, that we want to host uh, for next Saturday. Uh, that would be the 29th. Uh, wherein we can explore some of the more new technologies. And uh, we all know the today's world situation, right? Uh, it's, it's an unpredictable world. There are uh, certain uncertainties. But having said that, we, are, we have always done that firefighting with the COVID thing. But what next? How do we proceed from here? How do we build our businesses and grow our businesses in this new world? So we would want to explore that and how Avaya can add value to this particular thing. Uh, in this journey. So COVID is behind us. Let's look at the new world, the new way of doing business. And we will put our thoughts on that 
uh, we will always uh, expect your uh, suggestions from the industry and that's the agenda for our next uh, session uh, for, for next uh, week which is 29th so thanks tapanda for that opportunity thank you thank you mr thank you thanks to everybody but jitan i we will very much appreciate if you can share your presentation in the in this folder so that we can share it among our members we will do so, we'll so thank you very much it's a long discussion around uh, 1 hour 45 minutes so thank you very much for your patience and hearing about such a deep technology like blockchain all of you uh, all of your effort and patience thank you once again and we will meet again sometime oh, oh, sorry we are meeting again on next saturday at 3 pm with abaya thank you very much thank you everyone Bye-bye. Have a good week. Thank you, everyone.